<coughs> well, it's Sunday again, and a bit of a special Sunday this Sunday. You probably all know it's full moon at a quarter to six this morning here in Britain, and full moon is, of course, always special. It's brought an awful lot of funny weather where I am in Shropshire. We are getting autumnal gales now and this is really strange so all sorts of strange things are happening and as I said full moon it's just a culmination of things that happen it's a bringing of power to really to light <coughs> it's the time when the moon is fully reflecting the sun back to the earth so I hope it's all good with you and I hope you're all getting it together and going to be here because uh, it's quite fun and we have an interesting um, session today. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I never am. Um, I always wait for Otherworld to tell me, this is what you need to talk about today. This is what you need. This is what we need even more. What we would like you to do. What we, we would like you to talk about. I find it really works that way. Uh, as I'm talking from my ego, it's a load of rubbish usually, um, but if I'm talking with the sort of things that they want people to know and that I've done a bit of research into and looked into, then that really helps. And it seems to be working. Lots of you are telling me you like it, so good. So <coughs> hopefully there's some people out there. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a frightful cough this morning. <coughs> <coughs> well, actually, afternoon now. So I may be a bit choky, and I'm obviously sounding a bit creaky, um, but it's just probably part of everything that is going on. So here we are, full moon. People would call it the full moon in Cancer, but of course it isn't really. It's the sun that's in Cancer. The, full, the moon is actually in Capricorn the opposite end, because obviously it must be, in order to be able to have sunlight shining on it. So there's a joining there between Earth and water. Cancer's a water sign, and Capricorn is a deep Earth sign. <coughs> so you've got the goat and the crab. Very interesting animals. And that's where we are at the moment. Crabs, <coughs> interesting things, crabs, they go along sideways very often. And they carry their house on their back and they make new ones, at least some of them do. Um, the hermit crabs, of course, don't. They go around and borrow somebody else's. Somebody's left a shell that they no longer need, got out of it, and so the hermit crab shuffles his back end in and finds it the one that fits and there he goes, in somebody else's house. I said, very interesting creatures, of crabs. And they rarely go <coughs> straight for something. There's always a diagonal or sideways. They edge around things. They come at things from a different angle. And we all need that. And there's some of that's coming out in what <coughs> other world have been chatting about to me this morning about what they want us to hear. Goats, on the other hand, <coughs> are not. Mind you, they're very tricksy animals. If you've ever had a goat or had a friend who's had a goat or several goats, which is more usual because they're very herdy and they're social animals, um, oh, they're amazing. A goat can just about get out of anywhere. Almost impossible to stop. They eat anything from the washing on your line. I, I mean, a friend's goat scraped the paint off the boot of my car, which was fascinating, and, and ate it, apparently, because there wasn't stuff around. Um, they will try anything. They will do anything. They're also wonderful lawn mowers. Um, my friend Fiona's hoping to get two or three because she's got small holding, and there's parts of the grass that she doesn't want the horses eating so she's going to have goats on it. Interestingly, for horses and goats, um, like sheep and goats, if you have sheep on the land where you have horses, 
the sheep deal with the worms that the horses would otherwise get. So there's so much exchange in nature, isn't there? I wish we could do it better ourselves, because nature always seems to work together with itself. It always works with the other things, and things that it does help other things. And we just don't have that. We need to evolve. We need to get the hang of it. Anyway, so we have the sun in this watery but sideways sign. Lots of flow, but not necessarily in a straight direction. And we have the moon in this very tricksy, bouncing, es you know, escape artist sign. Wonderful thing that looks like, you know, that eats everything, that gets everywhere. I mean, you've all, all heard the saying about, you know, that's a goat path. Nothing but a goat could get up there, you know, up a cliff and, you know, b bounce from apparently impossible teeny weeny ledges down cliffs and we're with your hearts in your mouth watching the wildlife film. But they do it. So two things to think about as we go through, but just now put them in the back of your mind. And hello, people. I hear you. I see you. Yeah, I can see you're there. Um, put the goat and the crab in the back of your mind for the moment. They will be relevant, but not yet. Because we're really into the moon. And two cards from my two favourite packs, um, the wonderful um, Cheska Potter, sorry, brain's not firing, the Cheska Potter picture pack, which is really lovely. And that's her moon. Can you see? Yes, that's good. Now, I really love that. The goddess figure is holding the light, but she's holding it differently in both hands. Do you see? And it's almost like the one in front of her body is actually almost shining from her. At least it is for me. And beside her is the crane. And the crane is looking into the cauldron, which is full of fire. And the light and the fire and the sparks and the energy of the cauldron is coming up to the crane. This is going to be important for us as we walk through what in the world want for us today. So, hi everybody, more people coming. And the crane is important and the moon is important. So let's think about the crane first. But just before we do, this is the Greenwood pack, which is Cheska, Cheska Potter and Mark Ryan. And this one is the one Mark Ryan did after Cheska Potter had departed. And this he did with Bill Worthington. Bill Worthington is the artist. He's a brilliant artist. And this was his moon. Now, they're very similar. They have that, well, gosh, can't do this, can I? I will get the hang of it. I really will. Anyway, they, we both have the goddess holding the moon to herself and holding the moon up in the sky as well, in a lake and with a crane. Now, Bill's card hasn't got the crane looking into the fire in the same way that Cheska's has. And his goddess is quite definitely a mermaid, so is Cheska's. Um, so you have this moon-water, moon-water connection through, as well as the light. And both of them have the boat in the background. Now that's important too. And both of them are called, well, no, they're not. Bill's is called the, mir the mirror, and Cheska's is called reflection. Well, mirrors reflect, so that's fair enough. And that's what this is about. Mirrors reflect. Okay, we know that. You look in a mirror, you're brushing your hair, 
and your eye makeup on or whatever you're doing, uh, checking your face. And it reflects you. Now, actually, it's a bit like me now looking in, into the video here and not being able to know whether I'm going right or left because it reflects it backwards. It is you, but it's you the other side. It's that. Worth thinking about. So it is reflecting you, but it's, and it's the you that other people see that it reflects. It's not the you that is this side of the mirror. This taking me immediately to think of Alice through the looking glass. I love Alice through the looking glass. One of my favorite stories and well worth reading, but we're not going there now. But do think about this, that what you're looking at is what other people see when you look in the mirror. It's not the you that is this side of the mirror. And this is very, very much what other worlds want to talk about today. So the mirror shows you yourself, and it is your real self. It is, it, you know, it's the self that everyone else sees. But it may not be the self that you see, and it may not be the self that you know, and it may not be the self that you want to know, that you want to be. We're all on a path, and we're all sort of hoping to change and work it along, and. I don't suppose there's anybody watching here who thinks, I am the goddess, it's all over. You know, we all know that we've got loads to learn and loads to do. And the work that we do in All Magic is very much attached to being your authentic true self. But like everything, and particularly um, the old ways of Britain are quite zen in the way that they go, yes, it's so far, that's correct, but, and then there's another way of looking at it. So sometimes, like if I show my true self to people, um, I can scare the shit out of them. This may be a good idea. This may not, of course, be a good idea. It may completely hamper everything that I was trying to do, um, ruin friendships, etc., etc. So there are times when being my true self is not necessarily a good idea. It's not going to get any of us where we actually need to be, either me or the people, person that I'm working with, or the animal, or the garden, or anything else. Sometimes you have to show your reflection. But then, your reflection has to be what is going to help carry your message along. And the moon is very good at that. Now, the other thing that the moon has done today, and it's all over for us here in Britain now, that was at quarter to six this morning, but we're in a partial lunar eclipse. We were. This is when the Earth's shadow gets partly between the sun and the moon. So the moon gets darker and gets a, this beautiful blood color, this beautiful red color that we all love so much and we call the blood moon. And it's softer, it's different light. It can be very weird, strange unnerving, this ghostly, ready darkness. It's not like the bright moonlight that we normally get at full moon, which can be absolutely dazzling and makes everything black or white. Yeah? Black or white. So it makes it very one thing or the other thing. There's no shades of grey, there's no shades of colour, there's no shades in between. But when a bit of the earth shadow comes, and sometimes the whole earth shadow when we get a total lunar eclipse, 
the colors change and there's much more shading in between. We're not this brilliant, stark black or white that, nor that usually happens in the full moon. So you can see more. You actually do. The black and the white, I mean, have you been for a walk in the moonlight, in the full moon? I mean, I love it, it's great, but it's, you have to be careful because you can't see, you know, the little stumbling blocks. I mean, it's probably all right if you're walking down a road. I don't normally do that. I tend to walk across fields or down lanes or something like that where the going can be a bit rough. You have to be really careful because the stark black and white light takes the shadows away and you don't actually see as much of the ground. So you can stumble, you can trip. In the light of a lunar eclipse, it won't be so bright, but it won't be so dazzling, it won't be so stark, and you will actually be able to see more. Okay, let's take that back to ourselves and the person we show to the world. And it won't always be, of course, the same person. You know, I won't show the same person, say, in a shop or when I went to the bank or anything like that, sort of official, um, as I would to my friends. And I don't show the same face to all of my friends because they don't actually want it. They want this Ellen or that Ellen or the other Ellen and the one that they know and like. And sometimes they get a bit more and expense, the friendship expands. When the friendship really expands, then of course you can really come out and eventually they see the real you, the true you, and it's not worrying and it's not frightening and it's not confusing and you don't upset them. It can turn people off seeing the, the real you and they can totally misunderstand you. So you do have to be careful of that. So if we let ourselves be eclipsed slightly by some earth shadow, earth shadow, earth, mother earth, we let some of mother earth come through as well. We can often be a little more easy with our friends. And our friends find what we say more acceptable. So the whole thing flows more. We are able to make our point. We're all, they're also able to make theirs. And we're actually able to see our way, as you can, in the more shadowed effect of a lunar eclipse. So Moon is helping us with this. Helping us learn more about this. So we allow some shadow in. And I know in the New Age, shadow is, oh, I have to deal with my shadow. I have to get rid of my shadow. No, you damn well don't. Or you'll be stuck, like me, going for a walk in the full moon in black or white and no shadows are falling flat on my face. Shadows enable you to see. And they give you shades and colors and distinctions and nuances. And all of that's really important in every relationship, whether it's with humans or the land or animals or other worlds. It's the nuances, the little pieces, the little things that help us see clearly. So we have to get a new relationship with shadow, as the lunar eclipse helps us, shows us. So. Shadow and all that is to do with it, the personality, the one that you show, the one that is in the mirror, the one that you that others see of you. Shadow is about ego, is about personality. Now again, so much of the new age for the past fifty years, ego's dreadful, kill out your ego. No, please don't. You won't be you, it won't help, and you'll either be a soggy mess 
um, or, or you'll be a sort of non-existent thing. Um, we are more our, are our personalities. And that's part of how we make friends with people and how people make friends with us. It's attractions and likenesses and similarities and differences, because differences are really fun too. And we need our personality. And our personality is the reflection in the mirror, what people see. But we need to get to know it, <coughs> and we need to work properly with it. <coughs> I'm doing this coughing again, sorry. We need to get to know our personality. And not from a intense, emotional, personal point of view. We can do that as well. But we need to look at it and be able to see ourselves as others see us. Old phrase. See yourself as others see you. And, God, you need that magic in all of this work, in all of being a shaman, being our wenis, as we call ourselves in this country. Not shaman, we call ourselves our wenis. And being that means you really have to know this personality. Now, usually when people start this work, and people who don't go into this work at all, they think the personality is them. You know, at the moment, in this lifetime, I am Ellen Sentier. Okay? Yeah, we all know that. That's fine. But I wasn't in the last lifetime. And I won't be in the next one. So, who's Ellen Sentier? Because obviously she doesn't go on forever. She dies at the end of her incarnation. But... Ellen Sentier is inhabited by a spirit um, who has names, indeed. Not that we're going there today. But this spirit is inhabiting the personality, me, that you are all seeing, who is talking to you now. And the spirit self, the me, the real me, that is wearing my personality. And I call it like wearing a spacesuit for getting around on planet Earth. Ellen Sentier is my spacesuit that I get around with on planet Earth this incarnation so that I can do the work that I promised to do this time around. We all do this. Some of us know it. Some of us half know it, and quite a lot of people don't know it at all. And that's fine, that's where they are. Leave them alone. Don't push. But those of us who half know it and do know it, we have to learn to work with the personality that we've got in this lifetime. Now let's talk a little bit about personalities. The word personality comes from the Greek. A uh, Greek word, persona which you may have heard. And in Greek, it means the mask through whom the god, gods speak. The mask through whom the gods speak. Now, in Greek theatre, you may well know, but the actors wore masks. Not quite all of them, but, you know, the heroes and the gods and the protagonists and antagonists all or masks, <coughs> which represented a god or a figure or a tray that was particularly so, you know, war or anger or whatever. And these masks told the audience, this is who is speaking. And the actors' voices came out through the masks, of course, because they had the mask over their faces and down to the shoulders usually. And the voice came through. Now, actors always, nowadays, just as much as in the Greek times, they speak the words of the poet who has written the poem or the play that they are performing. And poets 
all through society, thousands and thousands and thousands of years, poets are one of the major magicians who are able to transmit what the gods once said. And they still do it now. Our poets still do it. You go read some poetry. Go read some modern plays, some good ones. And you'll see they are actually speaking things out that we all need to know. It happens even in little, you know, much denigrated things like soap operas, like Coronation Street, oh my God. Oh yeah. I mean, it's not my cup of tea. I, would get, I get bored very quickly with that, but it is the cup of tea for a lot of people. The archers on the radio, um, again, not my cup of tea, but it is for a lot. Um, <coughs> what was the um, third rock from the sun was one in America long ago, which was quite funny. And, um, oh, I can't remember the British one. That, uh, Red Dwarf, that was it. Yeah, another. Now, it's a soap opera, as Coronation Street is. Um, Star, War, uh, Star Trek was a soap opera. I loved it. And the characters in there, they told stories through the poet who had written them. And the stories tell us about life. They tell us about good ways to live it and about bad ways to live it. And about what happens when you live a good life. And that can be bad things can happen to you when you live good as well. So, you know, careful. Don't get stuck in these boxes. And if you live a bad life, what happens then? And sometimes good can come from that too. So there's all this twisting all the time of just what is going on. So all of these things are going right back. They are the same as our old teaching tales. And the gods still speak through the masks. Nowadays, actors don't wear masks, usually, uh, but they do wear makeup and they can have all sorts of strange things done to their face. So you get this actor who's 35, who's coming on as a 95 year old or as an alien or something else like that. And because of all the, instead of masks, we use wonderful makeup nowadays and wigs and all the rest of the accoutrements that changes what you see. It changes what you see of the actor and helps you to hear their words as they're meant to be heard. So, how are you feeling about that? You, your personal self, your personality, your ego, is this wonderful acting body that your spirit uses to get what they need to say over, to have conversations, to learn as well. Because you have, you know, some people will teach you better if you show them a different self than, you know, if you show them your usual stroppy self, you know, they'll probably say, I've sold that, I'm not going to bother. Um, if you sort of show them a listening self, then they'll teach, and it's easy. So, again, there is this twisting of who does what, and how is it all going to work together? And how is it going to work to help you, to help the other person or people, and most of all, to help the earth and all the gods and other world? Because that's really what we're all about, is working with them. We're not staff, we're colleagues. At least that's what they want. They don't want to be giving orders and telling us everything. They want to be talking things through with us, working with us and saying, we need this sort of thing done. And you sort of say, yeah, I think I've got the hang of that. Leave it to me, I'll, I'll have a go. So, 
well it's up to you to be actually working with the gods letting them speak through you in a sense as I am now because they've told me what I need to say or shown me and I've talked about it with them and we've discussed it and hopefully it's going to come out right but working with them not working for them not being subservient being a colleague so your personality you work with that so that it can move and shift this is real shape shifting even more than you know becoming a dolphin or an owl or something um, although we'll talk about that at another time because that's stunning and fantastic and amazing teaching um, one of my students had a lovely experience of that happening yesterday but I'm not going to talk about that now but we will talk about it soon about you know the shifting of how an animal invites you in and you see things their way you feel things their way and the learning that gives you is enormous so in a s another way when you work with people with your reflection what they see of you that is also massive learning for you and for them you're able to exchange that's a big point so what they see of you helps them exchange with you or hinders it so learning to work with this mask through which the gods can speak this persona this personality this ego learning to work with that so that you get the exchange where things happen between you both and not this which just ends up being fighting so moon my lovely moon by reflecting helps us understand that so what was I going to say where am I I know where I am where am I going yeah okay we're on the right trail <sighs> like to know I'm sticking to the plot <laughs> reflecting what makes the moon light up the moon doesn't have any light reflecting ability or no light making abilities of herself the sun makes light that's part of his point part of what he does he makes energy and part of that is light and part of that is heat and that enables the world to be because the earth wouldn't manage without light and heat it needs both plants especially for instance in photosynthesis and if without plants doing photosynthesis we can't any of us live and there isn't any oxygen so the sun makes light and the moon can't the moon doesn't make light neither actually does the earth we and the moon both reflect sunlight the moon reflects the light and energy of creation and the earth also reflects it that's how we get the lovely earth pictures from space but the earth also uses it so does the moon but differently the earth uses it in order to be able to create life and enable life to live light and heat energy that make it all happen if we get our personal selves our egos to a good reflecting level as the moon is then making light available for creative purposes is much easier every teacher is effectively making light available to her or his students so that they can learn and learning is creative or should be a bit of a problem around the 
supposedly civilized world nowadays because we're all supposed to pass exams and be normal and um, that's rote learning, that is not learning. But learning, which is what we do, what all magicians do, is enabling creativity. So we need to develop our personal selves and our egos to be able to reflect what is needed at that moment. That means being quite quick on your feet sometimes because moments change and you know you were motoring along fine and then oh my god no that's happened we better do this and you have to learn to do that. Probably quite a lot of you can ride bicycles and probably quite a lot of you drive cars and you do both instinctually Yes, you've got all the learning, you know what to do, and you could actually repeat it down, down to people. But you don't when you're driving, it's zoom, you're doing it. Gear change, brakes, accelerate. You do it. Steering, corner, straight. You do it. And you're not thinking about it. It's there in your body, instinctive. And you do it right. Because your body has it. Now, learning to work your personality needs to be like that. You need to be secure in it, happy in it, confident of it. Awful lot of magic is learning to be those. So, we started off, and I was talking about being your true self. And the fact that the mirror didn't necessarily show you your true self. So you have to know this true self from inside. And you have to know it well. And you have to be happy and confident in it. And the early stages of magical learning are always about this. They're always about getting to know you, the real you. For us, in the work that I do and the work of the old ways of Britain, we often use the journey of the enchanted forest. I did a little wee version of that, if any of you saw it, uh, on Friday morning uh, for the Rooted and Wild Festival. It's actually up on Wise Woman here, so you can go and listen to it, watch it again yourself if you wish to. And that's only a little wee version of it. And it shows you the top surface. It gives you an idea of what's going on. You can't do that in an hour. It's not possible to do that journey in an hour. It takes months, maybe even years. And you have to work at each step. And that's what the beginnings of magical work is always about. Because in finding yourself in the enchanted forest, you learn about yourself. If you've read fairy stories or watch films like Krull or um, was it The Never Ending Journey and, and all these, these lovely stories and they're about the hero or the heroine who goes out and finds herself by walking into the unknown. And the unknown for us here in Britain and in Europe is the enchanted forest. So you need to do this journey in order to find yourself. And when you have found yourself, then you can start to realize and know, and it comes, you know, you gradually get to know it on each step of the journey. And you get to know who you really are. And so you understand the spacesuit that you're working, wearing and working with much better. And you realize that it, it's really useful and it's really great and you're really enjoying being in it. But you know it isn't you and you know that it's useful because it's like the theater mask that enables the audience to understand and hear and see what the poet is intending in the play.
and the poet read other works, the gods, the ones we work with. When you know yourself, and as I said, it takes a long time. When you know yourself and you're happy with yourself, and that means being happy with the good bits as well as able to recognize all the bad bits. Deliberately changed my face expression there. Same thing. You need the good bits and the bad bits. We actually need and use our bad bits and they're really helpful because if we've got them, other people have them and if we know how to work with them, we can help other people who haven't yet got that skill. And it's no good standing there being saintly and white and polishing your halo. As my husband cheerfully says, you're as much use as an ashtray on a motorbike doing that. You need to be real. So using your ego is about being real. But it may not be about being authentic or the full authentic you. You are being like the actor, you are transmitting what you have to say to whoever's listening and watching. And you have to be able to do that so that it works, so that they can hear it and see it. And when you read a book, when you see a film or a really good play, what happens? You identify with one at least of the characters. You go, that's me, I've done that, I do that, I've been there. And sometimes it's, I want to be there, I feel that, that's really in my heart, that makes my heart sing watching her do that. So you really feel this heart thing with at least one of the characters. If it's a really good book and a really good film and a really good play, you will feel it with both the protagonist, i.e. the hero or heroine, and you will feel it with the antagonist, the bad guy. So let's take a well-known one. You will feel for Luke Skywalker and be able to identify, but you will also be able to identify with Darth Vader. And you can see, you actually get a feeling for him. You actually get sympathy for him. And that's a really good story and a really good book. Now all of this, I know, Star Wars is another enchanted forest adventure. Indeed, happens on planets and in space, but it's the same thing. When you go on your own journey into the Enchanted Forest and through it, you will meet allies and guides who are these characters and who will help you. And they'll trick you and trip you up and maybe fight you and maybe try and kill you. And you walk through all this, you work through all this, you fight through all this, you struggle and you trip along gaily and dance with them as well. And it, it's full of joy, always full of joy, even if it's full of fear and terror and anguish and misery and grumpiness as well. You can have joy and have all of those. You'll find, if you go on the enchanted forest, it's good. So, <coughs> There you are, you've done your enchanted forest journey and you actually know who you are, the real you, inside it all. And you know <coughs> much better the personality that you're working with. And so you can gradually learn to dance with it and work with it. And it becomes a better and better medium for you relating, relating to other people, to animals, birds, trees, fish, spirits, insects, rocks, everything. 
you find yourself connecting to everything and it's so much easier because now you know what is connecting you and you know how through the personality probably does that make a lot of sense to you hopefully it does it's what following this path is about and it's one of the things that working with the moon is so much about now somebody else with the moon came to me today and this is one of bill worthington's drawings and this is crow and you'll find crow was very much there on the enchanted forest journey that i did for rooted and wild on friday but look, Crow is actually there with the moon. For me, actually, he's not Crow, he's Raven. But he's the Corvid. And all of the Corvid birds, the jackdaws, the rooks, the ravens, the crows, the jays, magpies, all of them are super intelligent, super empathic, super sympathetic, and they are teachers. And one thing that all of the Corvids do, and it's so much what we need, so we need them for our help, is they're what's called scavengers. They take the rubbish, they take the dead bits, they take all the things we don't want, and they eat them and transmute them back into things that can then, atoms that can then become something else. So if we have one of the Corvids as a, an ally in our path, wow, because we've got the rubbish collector coming with us and he'll pull out the nasty bits that we've forgotten, they're sort of sticking to the bottom of our shoe or hanging from our coattails and help us clean up, help us clean up our act so that we know ourselves and we know when we're not being ourselves. And we know how to work this. And Raven, Crow, are all help. And they very much work with the moon as well. So, well, how are we doing? Are we just about there? I think we probably are. But we're still in the time of the full moon, and we will be in the time of the full moon today, tomorrow, that's Monday, Tuesday, and we come out of it Wednesday. So you can work with all of this, using the moon energy, asking her, please can I have some of your energy, help me with this, help me on my journey to find the real me, and to understand how to work the personality me. Use it. And use it too because she has done the partial eclipse she has given shadow she has given nuances into this particular moon period so she can help you more with that she's offering it she's giving it so use the next few days to sit there and ask it sit in the moonlight go out at night it's not that scary you don't need to go much further than your front garden if you don't want to. But go out in the moonlight. You could go out and drive to a hilltop in your car. And you can stay in your car. You can even lock your car if you're panicking. And you can watch the moon from inside and be with her that way. There are always ways to do these things. Do use the moon time. The moon time is wonderful. And this moon time, with the aid of the crab and the goat, with the aid of the lunar eclipse and the shadows and the colour, will help you begin to find your way towards the enchanted forest and begin to work to see your real self and your personal self and how they work together not how to get rid of one, but how to make more by adding the two together. 
making sense? And if you want to play, um, I just realised I've only just got three and a bit weeks, but Fiona Dove and I are starting our new site, and we hope to have some of the beginnings of the lessons that will help you to do this kind of journey and the Enchanted Forest up on the new site, which is coming up at Lammoth. So keep an eye on Wise Woman Facebook and keep an eye on my Instagram because I'll put stuff up there. And if you're interested, there'll be a moment when you can sign up. Um, I think that's probably come on with almost immediately, but we'll check it out and say next week. And you can sign up and say, I'm interested, I'm interested, and we'll put you on the list and sort out all sorts of things with you. So, looking forward to working with you in the future and journeying with you in the Enchanted Forest and working with you with the moon and with reflection and helping you get your feet on your path. Know who you are, know how to work with the personal self that is you in this incarnation. So have a lovely full moon time and see you again next Sunday. Bye for now.